thanks for this opportunity. And uh, uh, so I've been asked to share some aspects of uh, uh, a new center which we started uh, this year, uh, which is called as uh, National Center for Assistive Health Technology. And I'm also using uh, uh, this opportunity, also uh, extending invitation to all of you uh, to join as a part of the center's activities because center's uh, mandate is also pretty flexible and uh, there is a lot of scope for doing joint activities with each one of you. Uh, and I think, so that's the whole idea of this thing. So uh, foundations for this center actually, uh, I'll go back to uh, a few years back. Uh, 2017 is the year when world met for the first time. Uh, most of the countries to discuss on the subject of assistive technology. So, so the first global meet ever on assistive technology happened too late, which is 2017. So this is a, a photo from 2017. Uh, some of the people who are part of this conference also, you'll find them if you are uh, good enough. And. Uh, this is where the discussion started about the assistive technology, the need, the priorities, uh, and uh, uh, the scope of that. Uh, this was followed by another meet, which happened in 2019, again at WHO headquarters in Geneva, where uh, the discussions were continued to come up with uh, some kind of an assistive technology report, a global report on assistive technology, uh, which was that after 2019 meeting, there were a lot of uh, meetings, WHO meetings were held regionally and uh, uh, we were also fortunate to be a part of one of the reports which we worked for WHO on assistive technologies in Southeast Asia together, uh, uh, together with other organizations. And uh, some of these regional reports also fed back to the global report and finally the first ever uh, global report on assistive technology was released a few months back. Many of you may have heard or downloaded or seen this particular event. This was done on May 16th in 2022. So this particular report is very important in the sense that it kind of uh, gives the status of assistive technologies, the gaps, missing links, the challenges, and also what needs to be done in terms of recommendation they don't stop at the recommendations. It also suggests certain action items to be taken by each of the countries. So that way, the report is very crisp and uh, meant for all the countries to act. And uh, uh, just to give, uh, there are many, many action points. Probably there were about 40, 50. I'm just probably pointing on uh, a few of them. Uh, so for example, one of the points is more about the awareness about assistive technology. For example, a lot of startups are working on assistive technology, but how will people come to know that these assistive technologies exist and what is the value it brings them unless they come and try, touch, use, and know the value it adds to the assistive technology. So this gap has been there uh, uh, probably a, almost in 90% of the countries. This gap is very huge. So one of the ideas is, uh, as we are discussing about assistive technology, startups, unicorns, and new product developments, but I think there are many other activities to develop the ecosystem, which you'll all find in this particular report. It also speaks about co-creation of assistive technologies uh, as a teams, etc. And also one important point, which probably not discussed much in this conference, is that uh, how do you, what are the kind of metrics to assess assistive technologies is, is something which probably is a very, very important. For example, uh, if I am sending, let's say, designing an assistive technology, am I mitigating all the risks? For example, if I want to take out a drug or a vaccine, I, can, I can't just declare that I have a new drug or a vaccine which I have invented. You need to go through a very strong regulatory process and many of the assistive technologies actually need that kind of regulation. So this was also one of the uh, very important points uh, which came out as a part of that. But also uh, it, it stresses on more about national, international collaboration to come together to uh, build this ecosystem. 
So, uh, since uh, Ministry of Health and ICMR works very closely with uh, WHO, uh, they are the, actually the nodal ministry uh, for uh, a lot of the WHO activities. So, they came up and they wanted to start some of the activities in this space. ICMR and Ministry of Health too did not have major initiatives in assistive technologies. But now I think uh, they do have. One of the initiatives is to start uh, a national center for assistive health technologies. So this, uh, this proposal was submitted by a few institutes as a consortia, which includes All India Institute of Medical Sciences, then IIT Madras, IIT Delhi, uh, NISH and Saksham Trust. So uh, there is another very important aspect related to assistive technologies, which also came out of study is that there is a, a medical model to assistive technology and then there is a social model to assistive technology. And different countries follow uh, both these models. But I think what is actually required is some kind of uh, a unified model, which is very important. Uh, and I think uh, in India also we had this dual models. And I think the center is also looking at something which is more from an integrated approach. If I go to some of the Southeast countries, Hospitals are mandated to provide assistive technologies. In other words, uh, hospitals and the Ministry of Health takes the responsibility of all the assistive technologies. Every hospital will have a rehabilitation center, whether it's related to health or not. For example, if I want to, uh, let's say, get uh, a refreshable braille for my product, you may not classify it as a health product, Truly, but I think it still falls into hospitals domain to provide such devices. Uh, whereas uh, uh, in our country, it probably has been more about a social model. Now I think it's a time where uh, it's been integrated. Uh, I think if you really look at WHO's report, apart from the product, a uh, lot of it has been spoken, this thing. There are five P's. One of them is an assistive technology product, but uh, people, policy, personal and provisioning, how do you provision the assistive technologies, all are equally important and need the same kind of attention as that of a new product. And I think this center also does that. So far, uh, uh, we were working on more about new product development, making products affordable, but now we are looking at a complete ecosystem as a part of this particular uh, center. So, uh, what are the activities which we intend to do? Some of them are mentioned. Identifying the unmet needs which have still not been addressed, uh, both uh, in terms of uh, uh, assistive devices and solutions which are available but not affordable and also coming up with new assistive technologies is the domain of that. And we also work, since one organization cannot develop all the all possible assistive technologies. We work closely with any organization, startups, to join hands uh, to be part of this particular ecosystem to do that. That has been another mandate. And uh, uh, awareness about uh, digital technologies is a much uh, bigger agenda of this particular center. Uh, the, there is another very important component in this center is what is called as a experience zone or a, a demo center. So a place where people can actually go and uh, for example, we have created now a database of about 200 assistive technologies. Uh, that's the, uh, we are reaching that particular number uh, at IIT Delhi experience zone where people can come and they can look at assistive technologies for mobility, education, try out experience and uh, see what is the value it brings. Unless you see the value uh, yourself, you are not convinced that whether, whether to buy or whether to acquire one such a device. So uh, our other partners are doing, for example, the R2D2, which is based in uh, IIT Madras, is trying to create a, a major wheelchair skill training center, uh, similar in the locomotor disability. So this is a place where people can come and uh, do many things, experience and uh, this thing. And these experience zones are not just for uh, uh, probably experiencing. These also do a lot of workshops, 
capacity building programs, trainings to users, to AT personnel, to special educators, to occupational therapists. And that's a, a continuous process. Just to give, in last six months, we would have done about 15, 20 workshops for various stakeholders in assistive technologies. And we also look at policy and provisioning. So that's in brief about National Center for Assistive Health Technologies. And uh, we have our team here, and you can talk to anybody. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions.